Hi, in this video we're talking about balancing equations, which is something we have to do to, to respect something that's called the law of conservation of mass. The law of conservation of mass says that matter cannot be created nor destroyed, only rearranged. And I think it's helpful to think of chemical reactions as just simply being a, a rearrangement of the atoms that already exist in the reactants. Um, you know, one easy way to think about this is if you were to build something out of Legos and then take that, whatever that thing is, and disassemble it and build something different with the exact same Legos, uh, that's really what's happening in a chemical reaction. We're not creating new atoms. We're not destroying any atoms. We're just breaking bonds and making new bonds. And that's what a chemical reaction is all about. And so why do we have to balance an equation? Well, if I had an equation like this, you can clearly see that for every magnesium, I have two chlorine atoms going in. That's a chlorine molecule. And then the products would just simply be MgCl2 together. Now that one happens to be balanced just on its own. So we're good to go on that one. But consider a different reaction like this one here. Uh, this is a reaction where we're taking hydrogen gas and oxygen gas, and we're generating water, H2O. Now, if you look closely at the equation, what you'll realize is that on the left, there are two hydrogens, just as there are on the right. But on the left, there are two oxygens, and on the right, there's only one oxygen. The way that this is written is technically incorrect. This is like if I gave you a recipe and just listed out the ingredients without any of the quantities. Um, and so we have to fix that. Um, we can't just leave this equation alone because it looks as if we've gotten rid of an oxygen and that's not what happened. Let me show you. If I have an H2 molecule and an O2 molecule and I combine, I get H2O on the right, but look on the left, I still have an oxygen, single oxygen atom left over. Uh, now that just doesn't stay like that. And you certainly know that oxygen is diatomic, so there's no way it can stay like that. So really what happens is another hydrogen molecule comes in to react with that other oxygen. And so really what we're doing is we're taking two hydrogen molecules. That's a total of four hydrogen atoms. And we're reacting that with one oxygen molecule, which is a total of two oxygen atoms. And when that happens, we don't just make one water molecule, we make two of them. And so now this is a properly balanced chemical equation. And the way I know that is by counting up how many are on the left and how many are on the right for each uh, element and making sure they match. So here I have two in front of H2. This means that I have two times two, which is four hydrogens. So four total hydrogens are going in to this reaction. Let me check on the right. I have two in front of this entire thing. This is coefficient means that uh, I'm going to distribute. I'm going to multiply out over the subscripts in the entire formula. So 2 times 2 for hydrogen means I also have four hydrogen atoms on the right. That's good news. My hydrogens match. Let's check oxygen. Oxygen here is just O2. Technically, it has a coefficient of 1 in front that we just don't write. But this 2 in front of H2 does not apply to the rest of the side of the equation. It only applies to this formula here. So O2 is just two oxygen atoms. On the right side, two times this one subscript that's also not written means that we have two oxygen atoms on the right. The fact that as many oxygens go in as, as, as many come out, and the same thing's going on for hydrogen, means that I have a balanced equation, and that's good news. So that's how we have to represent chemical equations. We can't just write what the formulas for the substances are. We have to tell the full story. In other words, we have to put the quantities in with these things. So let's do some examples of how we would actually balance equations. Um, and here's my technique. Uh, I would start by writing this nice and big and leaving plenty of room in front of all of the formulas in the equation. Uh, you then would go and find the arrow in the equation and just draw a vertical line straight down. This separates the left side, the reactant side, from the right side, the product side. And our goal is to try to match all the NAs on the left to the right, all the Fs on the left to the right. Now, the only way we can do this, we can't change any subscripts, we can't just remove things. The only way we can balance chemical equations is by putting coefficients in the front of any formula. 
And that coefficient applies to everything in that one formula. So if I were to put an 8 here, for example, that would mean that I would want 16 fluorine atoms. That 8 only applies to this substance here. An 8 here would mean I'd have not only 8 sodiums, but also 8 fluorines. Um, so this is the only way I can balance an equation is by putting big coefficient numbers in front. I can't change the formulas for substances. Those are the correct formulas for those substances. But if you want to change the quantities of uh, any substance that's in an equation, you do it by putting big numbers in front. And again, we call those coefficients. So again, our goal is to try to get even numbers of each element on the left and right. That means that we've just rearranged the atoms, we haven't added or destroyed any atoms. And so the fast way to do this is to list out what elements you have on the left side. So I've got Na and F, and then copy that list over to the right side. This will allow you to compare your amounts of sodium atoms, your amounts of fluorine atoms, and if you had more elements, your amounts of any other elements you would have. Then you want to take an inventory of how many uh, atoms of sodium you have on the left. Well, here I just have one atom of sodium, so I put a 1 next to Na. I have two atoms of fluorine, so I put a 2 next to F. I do the same thing on the other side. Here I just have one Na atom, and here I have one F atom. So right now I know that this is not balanced because my fluorines aren't matching. If I was just to leave this equation alone, it would appear as if I was deleting a fluorine atom. And that's, again, not what's happening. So I just have to change the, uh, the recipe to include the quantities of all the ingredients uh, in, this, in this equation. So the way to do that, I want to change this into a 2. So I put a 2 in front here, and that makes this a 2, which is good news. But notice that 2 also applies to the sodium in this formula, and so that changes this one to a 2. Now, it's at this moment that you might be thinking, well, I'm never going to be able to balance this because I just... Balance fluorine, but I unbalance sodium. So this is just going to ping pong back and forth. Not necessarily true. Uh, look, now I have two sodiums on the right and only one on the left. But by putting a 2 in front of sodium here, that changes this to a 2. This 2 does not affect the fluorine way over here because that's in a completely separate formula. It's a totally different substance. The 2 only applies to the uh, formula that it's right in front of. And so am I balanced now? Yeah, I am. My numbers for sodium match and my numbers for fluorine match. So what would the balanced equation look like if I were to write it all out? It'd look like this. 2Na plus F2 makes 2NaF. That's it. That's the process. It's just that over and over again. So let's try another one. This one's a little trickier. So this is iron with oxygen gas combining to form iron 3 oxide. Again, I drop a line underneath the arrow and I list out the elements I have on the left, copy that same list over on the right, then I take an inventory of the elements. So this is one Fe atom, two oxygen atoms. On the right side, I have two Fe's and three O's. So I'm very clearly not balanced here. Um, one thing that you might notice as you do these more and more is that there's a lot of different ways to accomplish the same end result. Uh, here I've seen students go and put a 2 in front of Fe, and that's completely reasonable to do because that would balance your irons. But then you run into an issue with the oxygens, and the more that you do these, the faster you can kind of see uh, where to start. And so let's, let's do that. Let's put a 2 in front of Fe just so you can kind of see what happens there. This does balance the irons. Now I'm ready to balance the oxygens. A 2 and a 3, probably it's easy to get these to be a 6. So that might mean that I'd have to go and put a 3 in front here. If I just put a 2 in front, that would make it 4, and it's hard to get a 3 and a 4 to match. So if I put a 3 in front, that makes this one 6. I would then go and put a 2 in front of this one here to make this a 6, because 2 times 3 means 6 oxygens. But this 2 also affects the iron count. 2 times 2 means 4 iron atoms. And now I've unbalanced my irons, but it's pretty easy to go and just change this 2 up in front to a 4. And then that makes this uh, balanced. Now the final check, and this I haven't mentioned yet in this video, but the final check you want to do for these balanced equations is to look at these coefficients and to make sure that they are completely reduced to their lowest whole number ratio. 
a four and a three and a two cannot be simplified anymore. If I could simplify them, I would do that, but I don't have to in this case because it's already the most simplified version of those coefficients. Okay, let's do one more. This one's got a polyatomic ion and it. it's got nitrate. So this is lead two nitrate uh, with potassium chloride, making potassium nitrate with lead two chloride. Now I have a suggestion here. You might have had this problem pop up on the screen and been horrified because there are so many different elements in this. There is a, uh, a kind of a trick or a shortcut. Maybe it's just an understanding. Do you see how this is nitrate here, this nitrate ion? And it stays the same. It stays nitrate on the left and the right. If that ever happens, you can just list nitrate as if it's its own element. Of course, we know it's made up of a nitrogen and three oxygens, but we don't have to separate them out if we know it's gonna stay together on the left and the right. So here's what I mean by that. Let me just make this a little longer. This is uh, PB. I would list NO3, again, as long as it's staying the same on the right side, I can list it as if it's an element. So I can literally write NO3, just like it's a PB or a K or a CL. I finish listing everything. Copy this list over to the right side. PB, NO3, K, CL. Then take an inventory. I've got one lead. Look, I've got two nitrates, so two. I have one K and one chlorine. Okay, so that's the left side. Here's the right side. I've got one K, um, one NO3. That's just one NO3. Again, don't look at that three. That three is part of the polyatomic ion. It's along for the ride. I've got one lead and two chlorines. Okay, so I've got some work to do here. Uh, it really doesn't matter where you start. It just matters that you start. So let me try and balance these nitrates here. The only thing that could get me to balance these nitrates is by finding where this one is on the right side of the equation and putting a two in front of the formula that it exists in. And so that's this one here. So if I put a two there, that would make this a two, but it also makes this K a two because notice that two is applying to the K and to the NO3. So now on the left side, I just have to go and find K and CL and make those both two. And oh, what do you know, KCL, if I put a two there, that'll solve all my issues. Okay, so I have one lead on the left and one on the right, two nitrates on the left, two nitrates on the right, two potassiums and two potassiums, two chlorines and two chlorines. Now, could you have listed out the N and the O separately? Absolutely. It would still work. You don't have to do this trick, but here's why we would do it. It saves us a ton of time. Um, and if you can kind of bundle these things together and just try to balance the bundles instead of teasing apart the individual polyatomic ions, you're gonna be much happier with this. So that's how you balance chemical equations. It's just that same process. I think initially students uh, have trouble with these because it's a little bit of trial and error sometimes, but the more that you do these, and I hear this every year from students, the more that you do these, the easier they become. And actually, and this is gonna seem a little strange, students usually find this to be pretty fun. Uh, and so balancing equations, not only does it uh, respect the law of conservation of mass, but it shows exactly what's going on with the reactants and products in a chemical equation. Thank you.